Space Dog Radio, studio number four, Jet City, USA. This is the Space Dog Radio Show. I'm the Space Dog, along with Sizzle. How's it going? Sizzle's on the flight deck today and uh, ready to rock. Uh, Sizzle is uh, heading up a new Facebook program for us, so that's really exciting. Uh, thanks for tuning in to SpaceDogRadio.com, your remote location radio station. You can get us anywhere across the world if you've got a uh, internet connection. Space Dog Radio, you can uh, catch us on Twitter as well. Twitter, at Space Dog Radio. Today on the phone with us, uh, independent journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. Uh, he's been on uh, Free Speech Radio News, uh, Pacific Pacifico Radio. Uh, he's also been on Huffington Post uh, the daily, and done blogs for the Daily Cause. Mark Taylor Canfield, thanks for joining Space Dog Radio. Uh, thanks for inviting me again. I appreciate it. And uh, shout out to Laika, the Russian space dog. I love that dog. <laughs> we all love Laika. We all love Laika. So, uh, Mark, you you were uh, going to tell us uh, some some hot stories that you're not going to hear anywhere else on the media, right? Yes. As I was talking to you before, it's, it's uh, really difficult to get a lot of these stories out in the U.S. media. And that's uh, why it's currently sort of somewhat frustrating to be a journalist in the United States. And one of the stories that I, I try to talk about as much as possible is the U.S. standing um, in terms of world press freedom, which was reported by Reporters Without Borders. It's listed on their website. We, the United States is currently listed as 47 in the world, Ouch. which means that there are 46 other countries where it's probably easier to be a journalist and easier to get your stories out. So I, w- I was actually talking to Tom Harmon about this the other day, and, you know, people like Glenn Greenwald and Greg Pallas have actually had to um, move on to reporting for international media in order to get some of their stories out. So that gives you an idea of what it's like to be a U.S. journalist. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Hedges and Greenwald are two of the best journalists in the world. So uh, absolutely. To see them, you know, Greenwald is reporting for The Guardian, and uh, Pallas does a lot of stuff for the BBC. But they literally um, felt like they had to, you know, report for these other agencies in, in order to get the news out. So, unfortunately, that's what we're up against um, in the alternative media. Um, not only is there a lack of uh, funding and resources, but there's also these latest stories of um, uh, journalists being arrested at Occupy Wall Street events. And also this latest story that we talked about last time about Shannon McLeish. The broadcaster from Florida who found out through Freedom of Information Act documents that she is listed on a government terrorist watch list. So that's one of the, the things I've been talking about is the chill that that causes um, in terms of journalists and editors, publishers re- reporting on certain kinds of stories. Um, but there are many, many stories that just don't get reported in the corporate U.S. media. And I have to say, and this is, I feel like, one of the places where I can say this um, with impunity is that it's actually difficult to get some of these stories out through the, quote, alternative media in the United States. Um, and, you know, I don't want them to bite the hands that feed me, but I'm just saying that there are certain stories that's very, very difficult to get out, even through what I would consider to be the most progressive, open-minded alternative media. So, um, so Mark, what's... kudos to Free Speech Radio News. They've done a great job on the Pacific Radio Network, and I've been reporting for them since 2007. So they're one group um, of independent journalists who do a really good job of covering news stories around the world, and they do have journalists around the world covering some of these stories, but it's difficult. Um, yeah. But this is long, and, and you know, I'm sure that um, this, there could be many programs devoted to this, but I'll throw out a couple of them if you don't mind. Um, uh, I mentioned, you know, the story about Shannon McLeish, and people can check out Noam, or excuse me, Chris Hedges' article about that at Truth Dig. But um, she's a journalist, uh, a broadcaster for Air Occupy, a program out of Daytona Beach, and one of their recent guests was Noam Chomsky. But she's the woman who's on the terrorist watch list. There's also uh, the Seattle Grand Jury, which is continuing in Seattle. It's another story that's just not getting uh, media coverage, although... As I mentioned last time, Al Jazeera is called the activists who are currently in jail, America's Pussy Riot. And there is a latest update on that. And if you go to um, the WordPress 
website for the Committee Against Political Repression. It's, uh, the website is nopoliticalrepression.wordpress.com. But if you go to that website, you'll see that uh, the supporters of the activists who are currently in jail for refusing to test before, testify before the Seattle Federal Grand Jury, uh, they have posted a news story about uh, another subpoena. So this would be, I believe, the fifth person who's been subpoenaed. And uh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce her last name, but um, it's a woman named Carrie, and her last name is spelled C-U-N-N-E-E-N. So maybe Queen, I'm not sure. But she's from Portland, and uh, this was posted on the website on January 9th. So uh, she uh, received a subpoena on the 14th, and she was supposed to appear again on the 19th but they asked for a stay to the third, and then um, Carrie declined even to enter the grand jury room, and she stated that she will never under any circumstances cooperate uh, with the grand jury. So that's the latest on that. That means that there are three people currently in jail at a federal detention center in SeaTac, Washington, uh, reportedly placed in solitary confinement since de- December. Right. And another person who is potentially facing jail time. Right. We we yeah, and, and we covered that last uh, last week um, for listeners of Space Dog Radio. Check that out. Uh, Mark was on uh, Space Dog Radio last year uh, last week, uh, talking about that same story. Mark, what what are the hot stories uh, this week right now? It, it, today we had President Obama talking about uh, gun control. Uh, what do you what do you hear about that story? I, mean, I think it's going to cause you know whatever the administration proposes, there there will be you know. Um, gun rights advocates who will be very upset about it. And we've already heard crazy statements from people like Ted Nugent and other folks associated with um, extreme gun rights groups. So I I expect it to be a major political issue. Um, Although, you know, a lot of folks on the um, more progressive or liberal side are kind of upset at the president for not standing up for, you know, civil rights and dealing with issues like the Keystone Pipeline. I think this is one issue where he's probably going to create a lot of controversy and a lot of uh, material for Rush Limbaugh and the other shock jocks on the right. Oh, yeah. So that's more of a political issue as far as I can tell. But, but the we, so, that is that every so, time that the United States has passed national gun control legislation, it's been following some serious um, violence um, uh, involving the use of guns because it right. happened back in 1934 after the gangster terror with the uh, machine guns and then it happened after MLK and Bobby Kennedy were killed. So mm-hmm. another story that people should watch out for actually that's not being reported is that um, actually last month uh, there was a threat to close down 15 ports on the East Coast in the United States. Um, and this is an ongoing dispute with the uh, ILWU, the Longshore Union, with the port uh, owners. And there was actually a shutdown of the port in Los Angeles and Long Beach last month for a few days um, while the clerical workers uh, uh, took to the picket lines and then the crane operators and the other longshore workers refused to cross those picket lines. So what they were able to do is renegotiate so that they had a 30-day extension on their contract. That means as of January 28th, that contract is up again, and nobody's really talking about it. But it's just an underlying story in the United States about the power of the longshore unions and how they actually do have the ability to shut down trade in the United States and close the ports if they really want to. Um, But it's a story that doesn't really get covered in the corporate media. But keep an eye out for that because January 8th is the next potential strike deadline. And that goes not just for the East Coast, but also the West Coast. You mean February 8th? January 28th is when the... Oh, January 28th. Contract. Okay, got it. got it. Yeah. Yeah. That's another story that's not being covered. Um, one thing that we may have mentioned before, but it's a story that just kind of slipped through, is, um, and it's an ongoing story, is that the United Nations, uh, two envoys... Uh, sent a letter to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton condemning the crackdowns on the Occupy movement in in the United States. And the U.S. government still refuses to respond to to that letter. Um, But after pressure from Dan Frink and from the Huffington Post, uh, a, quote, unnamed spokesperson from the State Department said that they had 
forwarded that letter to the the, the uh, Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice. Um, so that's a story that nobody's writing about. I, I can't find anything on that except for Dan Frumkin's uh, article, and I think that's the major story. So, so let me get this. So let me get this straight. So, a, a letter was sent to the secretary, uh, secretary of state about the crackdown on the Occupy movement, and no response from the government has been received. No, and according to the envoys, which was the, they were the actually the rapporteurs is what they're called for peaceable assembly and uh, freedom of speech. They both, uh, and I, I believe the name is, is Larue is one of the envoys for freedom of speech, freedom of expression, actually, and he um, was citing international law and the United States Constitution saying that the violent crackdowns on the activists that were in the parks and at public spaces around the country um, was a violation of their civil rights and also international treaties. So, by the way, I I would add to that that former uh, New York Attorney General Elliot Spitzer agrees with that and has said publicly that the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, specifically the First Amendment, should always supersede city ordinances about, you know, park closing times, et cetera, in public spaces. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yes, there has been no response. Mark, Mark we're, we're about out of time. Are there any other, uh, like, uh, quick bullets that you want to s- send, send people to um, for next week uh, as far as what's going on in Washington, D.C., around the world? Well, there was a recent report that I covered um, that France 24, which is a French international news agency, put out about a study from Freedom House, which studies democracy around the world. And according to the latest report, there has been a decline in democracy in general around the world. And they cite um, several different countries where there have been crackdowns on protests and freedom of speech. So despite the Arab Spring and the Occupy Movement and the Ignatos and the current Idol No More global protests, according to Freedom House, uh, there is less democracy at this point. So I think it should give people a heads up on some of the, some of the things that need to change and what people need to be working on. But other than that, there's also just quickly on, on an EMT, an emergency worker, signing a lawsuit against the Seattle Police Department for a false arrest because she claims that the police officer lied about her arrest at the May Day rally in Seattle last year. And all the charges against the MTV, AMT have been dropped by the prosecutor, but she was accused of assaulting a police officer, so she's very upset, and she's filing a lawsuit. Jesus. And uh, other than that, I think, you know, the on, there's an ongoing story in Seattle also about uh, a Department of Justice investigation into the Seattle Police Department, um, which found that there was an, a, a use of excessive force as a practice and policy. So there's a federal mediator now who's trying to uh, push through these reforms through the Seattle Police Department. And the political story here is that the mayor and the police chief have basically been dragging their feet through most of the process. And mm-hmm. most of the original civil rights groups that called for the investigation have basically walked away from the process saying that it's bogus. So that's an ongoing controversy here. And it's I doubt it's getting much coverage anywhere else than Seattle. But there are many more, but, you know, that's that's what's on my mind lately, and these are some of the things I've been working on. So I really appreciate a chance to get the word out there because there are, there are always things happening that just sort of slip through the cracks and never get reported. And so thanks for the chance to talk about these issues. Well, thanks for reporting them. I know you do a great job. Um, we're going to put some links up on uh, Space Talk Radio. Mark Taylor Canfield, independent journalist. You can also uh, find him from time to time on uh, Free Speech Radio News on the Pacifica Radio Network. Uh, he also blogs on Huffington Post, Daily Cause. Thanks thanks a lot for all the information, and uh, we'll look forward to talking again very soon. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. All right. Mark Taylor Canfield, look for the link on spacedogradio.com. From someplace over Jet City, USA, this has been the Space Dog on Space Dog Radio, along with Sizzle with the Whizzle. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Be safe, be happy, and we'll catch you next orbit.